Hey folks, in my last video I benchmarked the RX 9070 and compared it to the 6900 XT across a range of games, and while the 9070 performed mostly as expected, there were a few moments that had me scratch my head to start with. In some scenarios, the RX 6900 XT and the 9070 were performing much closer than they should have been, especially given the raw power of the 9070. Maybe it wasn't the GPU that was the problem here, maybe it was the CPU, and that is a sentiment that was echoed through a lot of the comments on that video. I was using the Ryzen 7 5800X, which is a solid chip, don't get me wrong, but at the end of this year, it will be celebrating half a decade of life. And when you start pushing higher frame rates, especially when you're using tools like FSR or DLSS, taking load off the GPU, you naturally shift some of that burden onto the CPU, which can expose its limitations. So I decided to investigate a little bit further. This time I've focused solely on Call of Duty Black Ops 6, which is really the only game I'm currently playing where I do actually care about maintaining fairly high FPS. And it's also one that is a pretty solid built-in benchmark tool that reports CPU FPS, GPU FPS and a global metric as well. Now this tool is not 100% accurate to every match of multiplayer or warzone you're going to play, but it does go through a variety of scenes, with varying loads on both the CPU and GPU, and it kind of gives you a good overall picture of performance. So I've ran four test scenarios using two CPUs and two resolutions, the Ryzen 7 5800X, a new Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, which is the massive 3D stacked L3 cache that's designed to boost gaming performance, despite it running at a lower overall clock speed than the 5800X, and I've tested each CPU at native resolution, which for me is 1440p here, and using FSR 4.0 balanced mode, which renders internally at 58% of that 1440p resolution. So in the first test, with the 5800X running at native 1440p, we see a fairly healthy distribution according to this test tool. The system was 93% GPU bound and only 7% CPU bound. Now if we take a look at the graph, we've got two lines here, yellow for CPU FPS and blue for GPU FPS. The blue GPU line is lower and is the limiting factor here for most of our experience in this test run. This is the expected result when running at a higher resolution, your system becomes GPU bound. Now moving over to test scenario 2, again with the 5800X, but this time turning on FSR 4.0 balanced mode, which drops the resolution to about 1504 by 848. The bottleneck report shows that in this scenario we're 44% CPU bound and only 56% GPU bound. Now that's a huge shift and you can see it right away in the graphs. Both the CPU and GPU lines are pretty closely intertwined and overlapping, and fighting for position in the middlemost, most CPU demanded section. Now what this tells us is that the GPU, the RX 9070, is capable of delivering more frames than has been seen by the end user, and this is in the areas where the blue line is above the yellow one. A higher emphasis in this test has been pushed onto the CPU thanks to the reduced resolution from running FSR. And it's a key insight for anyone using FSR or DLSS, or even just lowering your internal resolution. When you do that, you may end up shifting the burden too far on your CPU, which will become the limiting factor in your experience. Now moving across to the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. Again, replicating the first test that we did at 1440p, we can see here that there is zero CPU bottleneck at all, we're 100% GPU bottlenecked in this test. The yellow CPU line is constantly above the blue GPU line, meaning that we're getting the most out of the 9070 in this test. The 5700X 3D is doing its job efficiently, feeding the GPU without delays, and that 3D vCache is clearly helping to get the most from the graphics card. Now let's move on to the final test, FSR balanced again but with the 5700X 3D. The bottleneck breakdown is that we're now 9% CPU bound and 91% GPU bound. Now this is a massive improvement over the 44% CPU bottleneck we've seen with the 5800X. 
and if we check the graph you'll see exactly why. For the most part the CPU is able to keep the 9070 fed for the majority of the test, meaning that the GPU spends less time waiting and more time pumping out frames and we see a nice increase in overall performance here too. In this test, the improvement versus the 5800X was to the tune of an increase in average frame rate of 24 FPS and an increase in 1% lows of 16 FPS. Now that's about a 20% increase across the test, and it can really be felt in game. So the 5700X 3D really is a step up in this title. So what's the conclusion here then? Well, upscaling technologies like FSR and DLSS, they can dramatically boost your frame rates by reducing the per frame load on the GPU. But here's the catch, as we reduce the per frame GPU load, i.e. change the settings to allow us to theoretically allow the GPU to process more frames per second, then the amount of effort needed by the CPU to keep up also goes up. If your processor can't keep up with that demand, then you're gonna hit a bottleneck. And it doesn't matter how powerful your graphics card is, your performance is always kind of going to be limited by the slowest part of the pipeline. And that is clearly evident if you're using older parts like the 5800X. So the Ryzen 7 5700X CD, it's already proved it's worth here. And this little test has just confirmed all of our suspicions from the last video. It does beg the question though, how does that change the overall results for my 9070 vs 6900 XT benchmark video? Well, that's something we're going to be talking about in the next video. For now though, if you found it helpful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and let me know if you would make the jump to the 5700X3D. I'll just say thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.